Hey, this is Lee Nevis, host of CJ and Cell. Thanks for listening to the following podcast on Public House Media. Leadership Show, the place where leaders learn more about themselves and how they can shift the way they lead. Because when leaders get better, families get better, communities get better, and the world gets better. And now your host, Chief Leadership Officer of Shepherd Revolution, David Prosper. If this is your first time listening to the Leadership Show, we want to personally welcome you. Because we started this podcast because too many of us have been hurt, underappreciated, and abused by unhealthy leaders. We believe that when leaders get better, families get better, communities get better, our workplace gets better, and ultimately our world gets better. We start all of our shows with a verse of the day. And we can find this verse in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. It says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also the interests of others. Wow. If there was any other verse in the Bible that talks about selflessness versus selfishness, this is the verse right here. And I truly believe that when we move and when we understand ourselves and when we have a heart of generosity, we can move from a place of selfishness to selflessness. And that's not thinking less about ourselves. It's thinking about ourselves less and others more. So how can you practice selflessness today? Can you open a door? Can you say good morning? Can you initiate a text message and say, hey, let's grab a cup of coffee? Hey, can I pay for that? So when we practice servanthood and selflessness, it makes our world a better place. And you can find this verse again in Philippians 2, verse 3 through 4. Do not do anything from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also the interests of others. There are two kinds of leaders in our world, leaders who command and leaders who connect. I truly believe that transformation only happens when we apply, learn information. Our shows are for working professionals, busy parents, on-the-go students, and aspiring leaders. So I want you to ask yourself these two questions today. Am I a servant leader or am I a self-serving leader? I'll say that again. Am I a servant leader or am I a self-serving leader? This is a very reflective question to ask ourselves as leaders before we start today. What place are we leading from? Today, we're going to talk about how we can set ourselves apart by leading from the heart. Just a recap on our previous episode on the Lead Like Jesus series. We learned that if we want to lead like Jesus, we have to answer those three questions. Am I a leader? Am I willing to follow Jesus as my leadership role model? And how do I lead like Jesus? Then we talked about in order to lead like Jesus, it requires these four pillars of leadership, the heart, the head, the hands, and the habit. So today we're going to talk about the heart. Most leadership conferences and programs focus on the leadership, the leaders' behaviors, and try to improve the leadership styles and method. They attempt to change the leadership from the outside. Over the years of learning from influential leaders, I have learned that it is a heart issue. The heart is a thermostat we have to our default setting. And 
If you're like my wife, when she gets cold, she turned the heat all the way up to 72 degrees. And that's too hot for me. But if you're like me, I love it at 68 degrees. And we always have intense fellowship on the thermostat of what degree it should be and what default setting it should be. And when we have uh, the default setting, it's typically what we leave our house with. So if the default is at 72 degrees, then when we come home, it's constantly going to be at 72. If it gets hotter outside, it'll cool down. If it gets colder, it'll warm up. That's the default setting. And the heart is the default setting of our leadership style. So until we change that, we will continue to respond from past hurts, hangups, and unhealthy habits. Ken and Phil, authors from Lead Like Jesus, two individuals who actually inspired this series, share this beautiful thought. The most persistent barrier to leading like Jesus is a heart motivated by self-interest. And we actually learn in Philippians 2, verse 3 through 4, that not to think less about ourselves, but think about ourselves less and others more. I remember when I used to teach in schools, I shared my heart with this one class, telling them how meaningful they were to my life and how much they changed my life and, and how much change they can bring into this world. I was, I was letting it all out. I was passionate. I got a little emotional. A tear came out. And this little girl raises her hand. And I thought she was going to return the positive affirmations I sent or just, just make me feel good. Nope, 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 nope. That was not her case. Her question was, when do I get my prize? Wait, wait, what? Yes, that was her only objective. That was the only thing that was important to her. As I shared and disclosed my heart to this entire classroom, she said, when am I going to get my next prize? When do I get my prize? She was only concerned about what was important to her. Now, let me ask you as a leader, how often are we concerned about what is important to us, our agendas, our goals, our quotas? And how often are we taking the consideration of those we're leading? I want you to just marinate on that. So what does this mean to us? I want to ask you that. What does this mean to us? Having that self-centered mindset. We all enter the world with a self-focus. The phrase I often hear from my two sons, what about me? You can ask anybody who's like, hey, I'm going, I'm going out to this the store and I'm going to buy this. And they would always say, what about me? Can I get this? Can I get this? What about me? What about me? And they're 10 and 14 years old. But how many of us adults are saying the same things? What about me? Look at me. Self-focus. Change is inevitable, but growth is intentional. And when we begin to move from a place of selfishness to selflessness, then we are able to realize that life is about what we give than rather than what we get. I'll say that again. When we move from a place of selfishness to selflessness, then we realize that life is more about what we give rather than what we get. So let's talk about some comparison between a servant leader versus the self-serving leader. So the self-serving leader, the self-serving leader spend most of their time protecting or promoting the things that they have invested their self-worth into and their security into. So for example, this is their public public image, their reputation, their competitive performance, their positions, their performance, or their personal fulfillment in their intimate relationships. So they'll talk about those things. And then they'll also uh, their biggest fear of self, the biggest fear of self-serving leader is it's not failure. It's the fear of losing their power and position. I'll say that again. The biggest fear of a self-serving leader 
is not failure. It's the fear of losing their power and their position. The very thing they've placed their self-worth in. Self-serving leaders think that they should lead others and others should follow. That is their mind frame. So let's jump on uh, on another another tangent or on another spectrum and talk about servant leaders and the differences. Servant leaders believe that their positions and their influence are on a loan to those who they serve. They are more prone to see feedback as a gift rather than as a threat. And I have a personal story about that. I remember going up to one of my uh, upper management and I shared some feedback with them. And I shared that we're teaching these students leadership and we have to model those behaviors as a leader. And if we're not modeling in it, then th- then we're not being authentic. Um, the response back was, I overstepped. I stepped out of my place. So instead of seeing the feedback as a gift of an opportunity of growth, my management saw that feedback as a threat to their position and to their power. Servant leaders exemplify the fruits of servant leaders by showing how well they've prepared others to carry on even after their season of leadership influence has been completed. So they're constantly thinking about the next generation and developing the others. So you'll see the fruits of what they're actually doing and what they're investing in and nurturing. Because servant leadership uh, leaders' legacy is not just limited to what they accomplish, but it includes what they leave behind in the hearts and the minds of those who they've had a chance to lead. Servant leaders seek the respect of the wishes of those who that they've been entrusted in and with the season of influence and responsibility. So they seek respect versus position. And they know that they are, uh, are being able, they're entrusted with the, the people that are around them and that the people that they're able to lead. Now I have some reflection questions that I want you to think about. How well am I doing in preparing others to take my place when the time comes for me to step down? Number two, do I consider them a threat or an investment in the future? Number three, am I willing to share what I know and provide opportunities to learn for them to learn and grow for those who will come after me? These three questions will move you from a self-serving leader to a servant leader. So let's talk about some of the fears and pride that cripple our leadership. Leaders who are dominated by pride have a high need for power and control. This is why they rarely support their people. They support their bosses more than they support their people because they want to climb the ladder of power and position and be a part of their boss's crowd versus being with the the people crowd, the quote unquote peasants, the people who aren't striving for anything. Pride and fear always separates us from God. It separates us from each other and even ourselves. The biggest barrier to intimacy, the biggest barrier to intimacy is a fear of vulnerability. Fear of having to admit that you don't have all the answers. That you need help. And that your abilities as a leader may be in question. Fear also creates the need to compare and draw comfort from comparison to others, which produces envy, low self-esteem, and jealousy. So you might be asking yourself, what is the solution, David? You're, you, you presented a lot of things that um, 
that are problems. So what's the solution to the, the self-serving leader epidemic that's going on in this very day? Number one, humility. It means seeing yourself not merely more, or is it, it means seeing yourself not more than you ought to think, but rather thinking of yourself less and others more. It's it's a sober judgment. It's a very thought out and everyone has their strength. People follow great leaders because they respect them, not because they have power. I'll say that again. People follow great leaders because they respect them, not because they have power. Number two, the number two solution to uh, moving from a place of self-serving leadership to servant leadership is confidence in who you are and who you belong to. For those who are practicing the faith, the believers out there, we belong to God and we are children of God. So that's who we are and that's who we belong to. For those who aren't practicing believers, I want to let you know that there is an opportunity to be welcomed as children of God. And so you belong in his kingdom and you belong in his world. Number three. Changing your perspective. What you focus on will determine the view of the future. You either serve or it becomes self-serving and that marinates in your heart and, and it controls how you see the world. Think about it this way. If I say, look for a Ford Focus, a white Ford Focus, then constantly you you will be always looking for a Ford Focus. When there's a a white Ford Focus, there's a red one, there's a black one, you're looking for a Ford Focus, but you'll be missing out on so many other things. So when we change our perspective, when we shift what we're focusing on, if we're focusing on how can I be served versus how can I serve others today? How can I be a servant leader? Then we'll move from that place of self-serving leadership to servant-based leadership. And this will shift everything. So let's recap what we talked about today. We talked about two kinds of leaders, self-serving leaders who operate from fear, pride, insecurities. And then we talked about servant leaders who practice selflessness And prepares tomorrow's leaders without intimidation because they believe that their leadership season would eventually come to an end. I want you to ask yourself, am I a self-serving leader or am I a servant leader? And I want to give you an encouragement and a challenge. My encouragement to you today is that you have the opportunity Today, starting today, not tomorrow, but starting today by practicing selflessness, as little as saying thank you, opening the door, thinking of others more than yourself. If you're going to grab yourself a sandwich, grab somebody else's sandwich. And then my challenge to you is what could you do differently right now, today, to be a servant leader? Well, that's all for today's episode. Please make sure you join us every other Wednesday of each month for new episodes. We're on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Please leave us a a review so that other leaders can hear more about this podcast. Share it with your friends. But most importantly, I want to hear some of your thoughts. If you have some thoughts surrounding leadership and how we can lead better, shoot me some questions. You can reach me at prosper at shepherdrevolution.com. Again, prosper at shepherdrevolution.com. Next time, we're going to talk about how to have the head, the mindset of a leader. You do not want to miss this at all. So again, thank you so much for listening to today's show. And I look forward to seeing you again. 
Thank you for joining us here at the Leader Shift Show. If you'd like access to additional resources and insight, text Leader Shift to 345 345 or visit theleadershiftshow.com. And if you're enjoying this podcast, please let us know and spread the word by giving us a review on iTunes. You can listen to our show on iTunes, Success Radio, Spotify, Google Play, and the IB Network on Spreaker.com. If you have a question for David, send it our way at prosper at shepherdrevolution.com. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time here on the Leadership Show.